Corpus, how happy were you for Tyler Bird to see him score that touchdown late? Oh man, we were so pumped on the sideline. I think if y'all would have got a shot on us on the sideline, y'all would have been more happy for us than for him. But, you know, we always, um, you know, we always make, I wouldn't say bets, but we always talk about, you know, um, scoring and what our celebration was going to be. And if you saw it, Bird did a little celebration, and that's what made us even more hyped on the sideline. Is that a pretty good lesson about somebody sticking with the program? I think so. Um, um, previously, Bird said, you know, he was a special teams player, and that's what, um, he sees himself as, but you know, we try to tell him you're not just on special teams because he's also plays back up to Juwan. He also can really sub in for any of us. So, and this game was one of the ones that you can actually see that happening. And I know he was happy, his family was happy, but we was definitely more happy for him. Have you seen positive signs from him as a receiver during practice? Yeah, uh, all the time. Like I said, he came in. Um, um, he played a lot his freshman year as a receiver, and you know that didn't go nowhere. You know he still has a lot of um, playing time at receiver, and I just think this game actually showed it. Mark, what do you think it makes a difference going into this week, coming off a win against Mississippi State? Yes, sir. I think um, it was a big momentum boost. I think we really needed the win, and we went out there and got the win. So leading into Bama week, especially playing a team from the West, I think it will be more. Um, energized to go out there and play. When you look at Alabama, what sticks out uh, on tape that you've seen so far? I mean, Alabama's Alabama. You know, they have good offense, good defense, you know, special teams. So um, I don't really know the game plan right now, but when we, when we get in the game plan, we're going to try to execute it to the best we can. Is there excitement playing the number one team in the country, you know, seeing how your game stacks up against that? Yeah, I mean, that's why you come to SC, you know, to play top-ranked teams, you know, to build yourself better, not as just a person, but as a player, and who else to do that on the number one stage? How would you describe the season so far? I mean, it's not, obviously, it's not how we expected it to turn out to be, but I mean, we just, you know, try to keep going, you know, try not to look back at it. You know, we did some things, a couple plays. I mean, really, if you look at it, we're just a couple plays from, you know, starting off better than what we did. But we take it as a um, lesson and we try not to make them f going in further into the season. What are the lessons you've learned about your team through the first six games? We have to be a more complete team. Can't just play for half the game or, you know, a quarter, two quarters. We have to be more prepared and that comes from practice, being more focused and prepared at practice so as we play a full game. How much have the coaches talked about the second half issues in the, in the first half of the season? Um, a, lot of, a lot, really. Um, especially after Georgia, coach said we needed to play more than what we did because we didn't go out there. Um, we have to believe in ourselves more than what we, what we have been because we're um, not a bad team. We're actually a great team. We just, things ain't been turning our way, but you know, we stick to the schedule and everything will work out. What kind of difference was having T. Martin on the sideline for you guys? Oh, that was the first game um, Coach Martin was on the sideline. And, you know, when we found out, we was like, what? You're on the sideline? We're like, wow, things really changed, huh? So um, we gave him a little um, junk about that. But I think he enjoyed being on the sideline, so be with us. Do you think it helped the young receivers, uh, especially just because a lot of them got some early playing time in that game? I think so. Um, a lot of guys look up to Coach C, not just because what he's done, but just because of who he is. You know, his family's great. His kids are great. They come in there all the time to see us. So once you know what a coach is for you, that's when you start playing harder. Not to downplay Jarrett, but when you look at what Brian's done in the past couple of starts, have you seen you know the offense feed off of his energy that he's been coming in with? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the players, a lot of guys like like them both. You know, they wish that both of them could play, but obviously it's only one starting job. So um, whoever it is, you know, we're always going to be behind whoever it is. For um, Brian, you know, he's young. He he still has a lot to learn, but you know, we're always behind him. We tell him, you know, things like what we see on the field. What and then Jay, when he comes to sideline, Jared tells him, you know, what coverage they was in. Things like that, and opposite way around. Jared, you know, being a little older, a little more experienced, he kind of knows what's going on. But still, um, Brian does the same thing. He tells him what he sees on the sideline. We tell him what we see on the field as receivers. So basically, just whoever's in there, we're gonna try to make the best for him. You talked about Brian kind of learning some lessons. The first interception on Saturday it looked like he kind of faded him into that mm -hmm. the interception. And then when he threw Jawan, I guess you were, you were open. What did you, mm -hmm. you tell Brian? You tell him that he's got to read that better. Kind of what did you say? Mm -hmm. Coaches, when he went over there, Coach was the first one to go to him. Then Jared was the second one right behind him. And then after they got through talking, we told him, you know, um, he kind of, I told him he baited me because when I ran my hitch, he backed off me. And that's what I told him. 
and he said he was going to um, look out for it more, but I think Coach and Jared had that taken care of. When, when Brian's running and you know, selling out his body, mm -hmm. flipped over on his head mm -hmm. and stuff like that, what, what do you guys think his teammates? Well, I say, well, I was running down the field, so when I turned around, I just saw him flipping over, and I didn't really think anything of it because he got right, well, he stayed down and he popped right up, so I didn't really think anything of it. And then he came out the game, and I didn't really realize it until we got to the sideline. They was like, um, he got a concussion. I was like, concussion? From that hit? So when we, I didn't really think of it on the field playing, but when we seen the you know tape, I was like, yeah, that probably was a concussion hit. So. <laughs> do you feed off that, like, carefree, fearless, you know, attitude that he has? Yeah, I do, but, you know, y'all got to play smart. You can't just go out there, you know, running, diving head first into the defenders because you're going to hurt yourself more and then the team as a whole so i'd rather you you know take what you can to get down rather than try to you know be superhero and try to sell your body for the game after brian fell on his head that you didn't notice anything in the huddle look different about him did you oh uh, no sir like i said um we were pumped we looking to the sideline ready to get the next play get the next call so we can you know play fast and it like i said it didn't really click for me that you know he was hurt until we got to the sideline a few more what was the conversation you had with josh Palmer during the second conversation um, just from my point of view, I was already in the end zone, so I'm sorry. I was already in the end zone, so with my point of view, I just seen him catch the ball and Josh Palmer was behind him, so um, it could have been different, but when I seen it, I was like, I grabbed him and I said, yo, at least try to knock it down. You can't just jump up and not, you know, act like, not play defender, so I just got in his butt about that, about, you know, playing defense, you know, you gotta know the stage, you know, you can't take our offense and PI, you know, just don't let them catch the ball. So that's pretty much all. So what, you know, how good is it to have that open line of communication between the receivers that you can you mm -hmm. can kind of check him when you feel like he did something wrong and people can kind of maybe have that same conversation with people? Um, as a receiver group, we've we grown pretty tight and we know that we're not going to say anything to, you know, dim diminish any of us, to hurt any of us. So he knows where I was coming from and coach said it on the sideline. He basically said the same thing I said. So I felt like I was doing something right. Mm-hmm.